the worst take on Russia and Ukraine? Famed televangelist predicts end times. On February 28th, Pat Robertson, a well-known American televangelist, uh, announced that Vladimir Putin, the Russian Kremlin, is invading Ukraine because, quote, he was compelled by God. Robertson came out of retirement to make this announcement during a special appearance of the 700 Club, a regular program of the Christian Broadcasting Network. Robertson began by reading Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 1 through 6, followed by uh, enumerating specific countries on the map, supposedly the actual direction of Putin's campaign. He stated he, meaning Putin, went into Ukraine, but that wasn't his goal. His goal is, was to move against Israel, ultimately. Putin, uh, he added, quote, Putin and Turkish President Erdogan's troops will one day work together to make up a tremendous biblical army in the latter days. This is not the first time Robertson made such futile predictions. In 1982, he predicted a devastating tsunami would hit the northwestern United States in 2006 and claimed that an asteroid would destroy the Earth in 2020. Alongside Robertson, another evangelist, Greg Laurie of Harvest Christian Fellowship, also used the invasion of Ukraine to fuel his Bible-driven conspiracy theory. I mean, I don't blame him. Like, he made wrong predictions before. People were interested in it. His Their viewership goes up. And he never, and it ends up being wrong. And he he doesn't lose supporters for it. So why wouldn't he do it again? You know what I mean? It's like a smart business decision. Like these people like never lose fans when people are like, wait a second, you told us this is going to happen and it didn't happen. So bye-bye. Like that doesn't happen to their, to their cult. So they're not, they don't have any incentive to hold back and these like wild predictions, right? I don't know. What do you think about this? I, I thought it was, it's just, it's, it's very contradictory as well, because actually, wait, let's play the video because then we okay. can actually dissect like more of his claims. Cause it's even more wild than, um, uh, what I just said in the blurb. <laughs> do you think, I think he's onto something, but uh, do you? <laughs> We have a viewer on LinkedIn from Romania. How amazing is that? Hello to yeah. Romania. Yes. All right. Let's uh, watch this. Oh, sorry. You were saying something? No, no. Let's watch like, it. Yeah. Let's watch it. Okay. I think you can say we'll pull that. You, you hear that? Did you hear that? Do you have the audio? Yes. Okay, good. I think you can say, well, Putin's out of his mind. Yes, maybe so. But at the same time, he's being compelled by God. He went into the Ukraine. But that wasn't his goal. His goal was to move against Israel ultimately. Oh my God. And God is getting ready to do something amazing. And that will be fulfilled. And what Putin is doing by moving as he is to set up uh, Ukraine as, as a uh, staging ground for one of the armies, and then across is, is Erdogan at uh, Turkey, and, and you've got between them that little Dardanelles area, and it's going to happen. So I just say that is what's coming up. Is Putin crazy? Is he mad? Well, perhaps. But God says, I'm going to put hooks in your jaws, and I'm going to draw you into this battle, whether you like it or not. And he's being compelled after the move into the Ukraine. He's being compelled to move again, to get a land bridge, and then across the Dardanelles with Turkey, and watch what's going to happen next. You read your Bible, because it's coming to pass. This confused me, because he's saying, is he out of his mind? Maybe. But then he like backtracks, and he's like, but he's also compelled. He's being pulled by the jaw to you know, do this. Or maybe he's saying, so, so which is it? Is he crazy or is God compelling him? Or is he crazy because God is compelling him? Or maybe God is crazy. 
Well, we already know that. But <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying, the guy who I worship is insane. That's what he's saying. I worship an right? insane bit. Yes. I, no. <laughs> I, um, what is the thought process that makes somebody like this come to a conclusion like this? Like, what do you think, like, when he's thinking and, like, putting two and two together, right? How do we get to, like, Putin is going for Israel? Like, I guess these people are just think everything eventually leads to Israel. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if it, all world politics has to eventually lead to somehow something happening to Israel because they're so desperate. Maybe he's dying, right? And they're waiting. They, they so badly want Jesus to come back, right? And Jesus is not going to come back until you <laughs> destroy the mosque on top of the Temple Mount and yeah. for the Jews to be able to build a temple. So every single world conflict are like, is this going to lead to Israel? And then they're going to be like a, you know, chaos there. And they're going to mosque is going to be burned down and they're going to build a temple. So that's why, you know, all roads have to lead, lead to Jerusalem somehow for them. Maybe that's, I actually figured it out. Yeah, that's exactly the thought process. You know, even if it's completely unrelated to Israel, it has to somehow. By the way, these people um, are a huge part of the Republican electorate, like the people who think. Yes. And, and the, you know, that everything leads to Israel. And they have a huge, because they vote, they're, you know, more than other people percentage-wise, they, they screw up Americans' foreign policy because of the effect they have. You know, imagine the world's superpower is so much affected by a lot of these people who vote based on increasing the chaos. The prophecies of a death cult. Yes, exactly. And their motivation is to increase chaos in the Middle East so that maybe the, the temple is rebuilt so that Jesus can come back. How dangerous that is that the world's superpower is affected by these people voting. Okay? And yeah. So I hope they all... Um, oh, how do I say this without YouTube getting triggered? Oh, oh pause? I hope Back it up they there. all um, expire? No, I hope, I hope they become old enough that they're no longer with us. That's very soon. Okay. Because they're all mostly old. Okay. So I think that's that will not true. It. Oh, no, no did... Wait, They're young. Like people always pass on like, oh, well, you know, the racist people are all gonna, you know, get old and pass away. So we don't have to worry about that soon. Or like the homophobic people or the people who believe in this stuff that's not true like these are passed down within cultures and generations and oh uh, yeah i mean they... huge in the u.s i mean in the u.s that there's a new brand of this cult this the older band of this evangelical cult has very focused on you know israel um israelis building the temple and all that crap but the new one, the new brand of these evangelicals, which was, which is the Trumpist QAnon cultish, right? They're like very anti everything Jewish, anyways. You know what I mean? Like they have a new, mm -hmm. they have a new take. They're more American centric. Yeah, the new brand of these Trumpist evangelicals, they're like they want to. They actually are less in favor of uh, being involved in foreign, uh, in other countries. So I think there is a switch happening in these, like in the the Q the Q Trumpist types, the, you know, they the, a lot of their branding is similar to the evangelicals, but these these older evangelicals they want the United States to go and cause chaos in the Middle East, so that the temples are rebuilt, and the new ones are like, no, get out of everywhere, America first kind of stuff. The, the evangelical like obsession with Israel is always so cynical to me because so. I'm from a Catholic background and like this focus on the end times was never something that was really emphasized in any of like my upbringing or in my education. So it's actually something I'm not very knowledgeable about in terms of how people interpret it. But Armin, I know you know quite a bit about this. So my understanding is that um, the idea is that most of the world's Jews are going to return to Israel. And then, like you said, they're going to build the temple again on the Temple Mount. And then at some point, like God is going to initiate or Armageddon will be initiated, at which point almost the entirety of all of those Jews will go 
how do I see this for YouTube? Um, no more. They would, right? Yeah. Yes. So it's so crazy to me that they used they uh, that it's so promoted that, that how much they love Israel when you love Israel so that all of the Jewish people will go there and then be no more. If yeah, they God only, is, succeeds, that's they, insane. <laughs> that's, so, that's so disgusting and genocidal. It's, like, it's psychotic. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's are, so, like, it's, I don't even have words. And they, Christian and love. I feel like it's weird to me that Israel, like, allows people to give tour guides. Like, they're evangelical tour guides where they'll take people around Israel and show you specific spots where the end times are going to happen. I'm like, you let people like this in your country? <laughs> like, I mean, to, I, yeah. to go see I mean, where your whole people will be bye bye? <laughs> like, what? Yes, I mean, the far, the, the far right in Israel is celebrating the far right in America knowing that the far right in america these evangelicals in america not the i mean the conservatives i was just the conservatives in israel celebrate the conservatives in the united states knowing that these conservatives in the united states are basically wishing for the day where they where they would where, where these Jew, jewish people will on the, all, one day be wiped out by their by their by their by their sky sky daddy so it's such a bizarre they you know they're I guess like the I, the way I heard the conservatives in um, religious people in Israel justify this is like, okay, we know these Christians are insane. Our religious mumbo jumbo is not insane. Okay. But these Christians are insane and, but they're supporting us anyways. So given that we know that the Jesus is not going to come back and wipe us out, let their lunacy, we'll take their we're going to take, we'll take their money. We'll take advantage of their lunacy in the meantime. Okay um so <laughs> i think it's like, christians uh, it's such a toxic relationship <laughs> it's like it's it, it like so yuval is here hey yuval yeah. um uh saying atheist republican i'm not sure i don't i can't even say this that they want all the jewish oh my god do you bye bye yeah, we shouldn't even say that um we shouldn't even highlight that youtube we're not saying, saying this i is think they believe that they will return to Jesus when Armageddon comes. And that's just something that happens, has to happen along the way. That's still really they, messed I, up to me. Okay. They will say they either convert or they will be wiped out. That's what they think. Okay. So if they don't, some of them will convert and will be saved and the other ones will be wiped out. That's what they think. By the way, YouTube, just for the sake of it, for, for the sake of not getting a strike in the review process by a human, this is not our views. We're against these views. We're just telling what some very crazy people believe. Okay. Obviously we're against all of these. I hope YouTube, if this, the manual review of this strike help, saves us, uh, you will is also saying, yeah, each side thinks they're playing the other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like obviously our fantasy so is toxic. correct. <laughs> our fantasy is correct and they're the idiots. So we're using them. Both sides fix exactly the same thing. Oh my God. Match made in hell. Um, um, do you have some other highlighted comments that we have to? Yes, secular rarity is referring to Pat Robertson saying so he is admitting that God is compelling Putin to commit atrocities. So God wants this. I mean, that's technically in line with the uh, biblical. I mean, God also yeah. compelled the Pharaoh to basically abuse Jewish people. Like I, mm -hmm. har he hardened his heart. So basically, the Pharaoh he had no choice. Moses was like, let my people go. And God was like making Pharaoh not let his people go. And then he was punishing and God was punishing the, the, um, the Egyptians for it. <laughs> like what the hell? It makes no sense. Like God basically killed the first born of every Egyptian because of what the Pharaoh did, even though Pharaoh did exactly what God wanted him to do. He specifically says in the Bible that God hardened his heart to do all of these things. I mean, why did even Moses talk to Pharaoh? Like imagine Moses knowing that God is hardening his heart and like, let my people go, even though I know you can't because God is forcing you not to. Why are you even asking him that? It's so bizarre. Religious people, you guys are, you guys are insane. You're all insane. All right. You know, oh, and then uh, Adam uh, Abelia, 
uh, is saying fetishizing Jewish sacrifice for their salvation. Yes, basically. Yeah. Um, I mean, it wouldn't so be the first time. They're weird and gross. True. Wait, actually, that's the basis of the whole religion. <laughs> yeah, <Wait. laughs> that is. <a> <laughs> 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 they wear a symbol on it of it on their necks. Um, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wait, but what's really interesting about this whole prophecy? It's, Christians but, want Jewish blood to save themselves. That's their entire religion. They like, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're growing up like this way, you don't think about it, and then when someone puts it like that, you're like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, it's like it's when an someone... entire cult based on like sp is spilling Jewish blood to save yourself from your know, from a curse. Yeah. But what's interesting yeah. about this whole prophecy from Pat Robertson and a lot of other evangelical Christians, because I kind of went on a little wormhole uh, looking into this today, is that this ties into the whole story of Gog and Magog. How? So I think the story of Gog and Magog might be different in Islam than it is in um, yes. Christianity. So... The idea from what they were saying, the sources that I was watching today, <laughs> according to them, Magog refers to Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. And then, so that's the land uh, of Magog. And then Gog yeah. is the chief of Magog. So when he was, I, I watched the full like 20 minute segment of Pat Robertson's nonsense talking about this. And he lays out how all these lands that are named in Ezekiel, including Magog, you know, Persia is mentioned as well as put and Kush referring to Libya and Egypt and then rush, which they just are assuming means Russia. They're like, Oh, rush. It must mean Russia. So that's how this is all going to come together. And that these leaders, you know, cause mm. Magog, these states used to be Soviet states. So they're all going to come together and like descend. Oh, go, so that's how you put them through, together. And then go down okay, through okay, Turkey okay. towards Israel. Interesting. Interesting. D is saying eggnog for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. But so I see how the story connected. of Gog and Magog or Juju Majuj is. <laughs> I like how you say it. Yes. <laughs> is, is like yes. actually about like giants, right? It's, I don't know, it's, some people describe it like giants, some people describe it as like zombies coming out of the ground from in, out from under the ground. I don't know, people describe it differently. It's, I don't know. And it's, some people describe it more like coming like a Game of Thrones thing, like with this wall. Like, you know how in Game of Thrones there's an ice wall? In yes, Islam, it's like, a, then... in Islam, it's like not an ice wall, it's like an iron wall that, um, that Alexander the Great made to hold them and people are like where is this wall this wall has to be so big how come we haven't found it yet and apparently they're behind this wall and they can't pass it and one day if they do pass it we're all screwed by these like zombie army oh my god the more Wait. we talk about what religions people actually believe the more we realize how insane all of this is but when yeah, you say on. it out loud it's pretty wild yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> wait how are you supposed to say yuju majuj yeah juj and majuj yeah, Jews by my Jews. Oh, okay. Yes. We haven't. <laughs> I like the way I say it more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just rolls off the tongue. This uh, is referred to in the Quran. The guy who built mm -hmm. the wall there is referred to as Zulgarnain. Zulgarnain means the person with the two horns. And apparently, because Alexander's imagery on coins and stuff has him with the helmet of two horns, people suspect that this is, re is referring to Alexander the Great. And this is why some people consider Alexander the Great to be a prophet in Islam. He's, he was like, you know, something. Some people, not everyone. Well, we anyway, you know, supposed to be Muslim, anyways. We just got corrupted. Yes. So it makes sense. Yes. Yes. Hey, guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.